Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video will show you how to build your own surprise glitter package. By now, you might have seen this awesome video by former NASA engineer Mark Rover. Mark got fed up with people stealing packages off his porch and decided to take matters into his own hands. He built a decoy package that releases an explosion of glitter when it's opened. There's a lot of great engineering in Mark's video, but it might be a little intimidating if you're a student or new to electronics. Not just the glitter releasing part, but it has four Android phones with cameras to record reactions, GPS tracking so we can get the package back, custom circuits and software to control it all, and a fancy 3D printed case. In this video, we'll show you how to make your own much simpler and cheaper surprise glitter package with no software or cameras, just a circuit and a mechanism to release the glitter. Students, we advise you not to try this on real criminals. That's dangerous and could get you in trouble. Instead, it makes a great proof of concept for an engineering project. If you want to try it on real people, be sure to get their permission first and be prepared to do a lot of cleanup. Now, even if you don't know anything about circuits, here's your crash course in circuits as far as this video is concerned. I've got a battery pack that provides electrical power and a motor that's going to spin and throw the glitter everywhere. And for this motor, I've just put a little piece of tape on the end so we can tell when it's spinning. We'll worry about the part that's gonna disperse the glitter later. In order for this motor to spin, I need a closed circuit or a complete closed path for electricity to flow out one wire from the battery pack, through one wire from the motor, then back out through the other wire and back to the battery pack. Okay, so I can do that with alligator clips here, which are these handy little connectors that are called alligator clips because they have these little jaws with teeth on them that I can use to connect the two black wires. So there I have one set of wires connected, but I don't have a closed circuit, so nothing's spinning. There's no electricity flowing yet. And I can also connect the two red wires, and the moment I connect this red wire, the motor's gonna start spinning, and it's gonna be kind of loud and obnoxious, so I'm not gonna let it spin for very long. I'm just gonna show you. There we go. Okay, and then the moment I disconnect the red wire, that stops spinning. And you might think, okay, I have red to red and black to black. I need to make sure those colors match up. If you've done anything with circuits using LEDs, you know that polarity or the direction of those connections matters. In the case of a DC motor, you're actually lucky if I switch these wires and I connect black to red and red to black, it still works. It just reverses the direction that the motor spins. So in the case of the simple DC motor, you don't actually need to worry about that. <laughs> the key ingredient in your circuit will be something called a limit switch, also known as a lever switch. The switch has three electrical contacts, two of which form a connection that is normally open if the switch is not pressed, meaning you have an open circuit and no electricity flows unless something bumps into the switch, in this case, turning on the motor. You're going to want to hook this up the other way around. When you stick the switch inside your box and close the lid, the switch will be depressed and you want the motor to be off. When you open the lid, the switch will release and you want the motor to turn on. So I'm going to move this contact over to the third connection, depress the switch like it will be when it's inside the box, and now, when I simulate opening the lid and releasing the switch, the motor will turn on, dispersing the glitter. Now here's the tricky part. I want to mount this switch inside the box such that the switch is depressed when the box lid is closed and doesn't release until the lid is open far enough to allow the glitter to shoot outside the box. If the switch is mounted too low and releases too early, then the motor's going to turn on too soon and the glitter will be contained by the lid of the box, which of course ruins the fun. Now, in addition to the circuit, the mechanical design of your package is also important. You need something to disperse the glitter. In Mark's design, this was a 3D printed cone that held the glitter and then threw the glitter outward when it spun. You can make a simple one just out of a piece of paper by cutting the paper into a circle and then cutting a line along the radius from the outside to the center. This allows you to fold the paper into a cone shape. You can hold that in place with tape. It'll also help if you cut out a couple small rectangular pieces and fold them at 90 degree angles, which you can then tape inside the cone. Those will help disperse the glitter when it spins. And then finally poke a hole in the bottom and use a dab of hot glue to attach the cone to your motor shaft, being careful that you don't use too much glue and gunk up your motor. You wanna make sure this can still spin freely after it's attached. So you also need to make sure the motor fits appropriately inside the box. You need it to be low enough such that the lid can close, but high enough such that it disperses the glitter outside the box when it spins and doesn't just throw it around everywhere inside the box, which would kind of defeat the purpose. So I've done that just by poking two holes in a piece of cardboard and bending the sides down such that when I thread the motor wires through these holes, the motor sits flat 
And then this piece of cardboard sits inside the box holding the motor at the appropriate height. All right, so now let's put it all together. You can see I have hot glued the switch just inside the lid of the box. Obviously you want to be careful not to use too much hot glue and gunk up the switch and then make sure you can hear that clicking noise when you close and release this flap. I have used a soldering iron to solder a bunch of the wires for my circuit to make it a little sturdier. So you can see some of the solder connections in there. If you don't have a soldering iron, you can probably get away with just twisting the wires together and covering them with electrical tape. Obviously that won't be as sturdy, but again, if you don't know how to solder or don't have a soldering iron available, it should be just fine. And for testing purposes, I haven't soldered the complete circuit yet. I have left two of these alligator clips that will allow me to connect the battery pack easily without reaching inside the box. But if you wanted the whole thing to be permanent, then you could solder all the connections instead of leaving the alligator clips. So what I'm gonna do here is do a test run without glitter. Obviously you don't want to get glitter all over yourself if you can avoid it. So I'm going to close these flaps, close up the box, connect my two alligator clips externally. So now my circuit is completed inside the box, but the switch is being pressed down, which is preventing it from spinning. And when I open the box, as ideally, ideally when I open this flap over on the right, the motor should start spinning. There we go. And I close those flaps again and the motor stops. You can see, again, I want to have the switch mounted such that the motor really doesn't start spinning until these two flaps are open. Because if the motor starts spinning when all the flaps are up like this, it's just gonna contain the glitter inside and spoil all the fun. Okay, so now we're gonna fill it up with glitter and try the real thing. And there you have it, a simple yet functional surprise glitter package. If you need more information, for example, you're not sure where to get the electronic parts, check out the description below this video. If you work on your own design, we'd love to hear about it, either in the comments here or on our social media, where again, you can find the links below the video. And for thousands of other science and engineering projects you can do for fun at school or at home, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.